with Sinet or in, in close collaboration um, in parallel with Sinet. So <coughs> Sinet has been in the works for um, about 20 years, almost 20 years. So it, and Sinet, for those who might not know it, basically it's a virtual floor platform. And uh, its taxonomic scope is vascular plants. Its geographic scope is North America. And it's mainly based on specimen data. There's no, over 13 million specimens in there at this time. But there's also there's distribution maps and species keys and species descriptions. And, um, and it basically caters to field researchers, herbarium staff, uh, wildlife managers, people doing plant inventories, and even amateur botanists, and, and more. So it's about 20,000 user hits a month, so it's, it's rather active. So Signet version 1.0 <laughs> took place back in around 2000, and it was thanks to an NSF grant that was awarded uh, the PI with Peter McCartney, co-PI with Karina Grease and, and others, Nancy Grimm, was associated, and, and it was to network. The goal was to network a bunch of resources that were available, digital resources, and into a, a um, into a single access point. And so, Signet was one part of that. And Signet it was originally called the Southwest Environmental Information Network. We don't really call it that anymore, you'll see why, but that's, that's where it came from. And there was two graduate students that were associated. So Robin Schroeder, she was originally a Schroeder, and uh, she was a lichenologist. And she's, uh, she became a very talented biologist, but she became a very talented programmer. And now she's um, living up in, in Illinois. And then the other, um, lucky graduate student was myself, and uh, so this was our a, a research assistant for this project. Um, but I was trained; I was being trained as a botanist originally, and as a master thesis. And my graduate advisors is Les Landrum was my chair, and Donald Pinkball was my co-chair, and, and Kathleen Pig, and they're the ones that directed helped to direct me both in the floristic aspect. I did the West Park Boat Creek, another Mobion Rim type flora. And, uh, but they also direct me towards the biodiversity informatics realm. And that's, that's where I kind of continued. It kind of became an obsession with me, and <laughs> along with Sinus, and it's a continued obsession with me. So <laughs> uh, back then, originally, um, Robin and, and I, we worked at creating a resource. We did the majority of the programming back then. It was a Java-based application with a Microsoft SQL backend. And it mainly had collections from the major um, herbaria, mostly the universities here in Arizona. And it was unique in the aspect of uh, it didn't hold the specimen data within the database itself here. Each institu institution had their own database. And then when a user did a query, they took the query var variables and it, it um, would access the remote databases, grab the data, compile it on the server um, at ASU, and then present it to the user. Now, it was a progressive idea, a distributed network of databases. Um, and it was lightweight, so you didn't have a big data cache of all these records. However, it was a little slow, because they had to grab that data. And also, connectivity was an issue, because there was, wasn't unusual for one of those university databases to go down or have an issue with the connection. So it was hard to get all the data at any one time. Uh, right around this time, we also were fortunate. Les Landrum was the lead. He got a, a grant to digitize a lot of the Arizona specimens. And there was contracts out to the other universities, so U of A and NAU, with Steve McLaughlin and Tina Ayers. And, uh, and so that increased the number of specimens that were there. But at the end of 2008, I, I think we were still 
below 500,000 specimen, um, mostly Arizona and Southwest specimen. Version two came along back in around 2008. Oh yeah, and there was another, you got another grant to image all the specimens too, right? Mm -hmm. There's another grant to image all the specimens. That was the second grant of, uh, of 2008 or so. So that was around this time. So that created a big resource, and that was within the three herbaria too, so that became a big and resource. Botanical garden, botanical garden. Oh, botanical a. garden yeah. and ASU, that's right, yeah. yeah. And um, so, but this is uh, 2008, also we got another grant to work on the software, and Karina Grease was a PI, Tom Nash and myself, we were co-PIs, and this is what led to convert Synec into a virtual floor platform <coughs> called um, Symbiota. And so what we did is, uh, I rigi originally had this software platform that had interactive keys and I called it Symbiota. So we got this grant to merge Synec and this together. And so I reworked the, the Synec um, and integrated it in, as into Symbiota as a PHP <coughs> JavaScript front end with a my, my, um, MySQL back end, so open source. And uh, we ch went from a distributed model to a data cache model. So now we're grabbing the data, creating a data cache, and then that data would be updated periodically. So now it was a lot faster, and the connectivity, we weren't having problems with the database doing that. So, Around this time, we also realized that it was a read-only application back then. We realized that there was a lot of smaller collections that needed a place to manage their data by. So we built in these tools where you can manage the specimen data directly within the platform. And there's a lot of benefits to that. It was, uh, uh, you didn't need to um, install any special software. All you needed was a browser. It was platform independent globally accessible to your house or wherever. You didn't have to deal with firewalls accessing data. And, um, and it could make use of web services. And, and we would do the work of making sure that databases were backed up so they were, the collections wouldn't have to worry about that stuff. Here's an example of the data entry form. And, uh, so you can do data entry from the label. You load the label and do data entry. So now you had a situation where we would, we had the data snapshots. So if there was a collection that was managed in data in another software, such as specify, KEMU, um, they can, we could grab that data, import it in, and it'd be a snapshot of their data, and it would be periodically updated. But now we had a situation where people can start managing the data, data live directly within Sinai. And ASU and DBG, a lot of them are very here, they moved away from their in-house databases and started doing <coughs> And then when ads collections started entering, we'd encourage them if they had an uh, Excel database or a homemade database, we would encourage them to start managing data here to kind of align with standards that were being built. So that, this work, that grant created Symbiota. And Symbiota is basically just a software platform. Yeah, I grew out of China. And it was a platform where you could install the software, modify the configuration files, and then build a unique data set where each of the data sets would have their own geographic or text map scope. And you could create a virtual floor or virtual fauna. And here's, a, here's some examples of some of the portals out there. This is lichens of North America. So they all have their own look and feel based on the configuration. And they all have their own the data itself. They have a unique taxonomic and geographic scope. And right now there's about 40 or 60 different public portals out there. And, and so this basically software grew out from Sinet. And so now we're entering at this stage. So Sinet is one of those portals at this point. So 
now we're at a stage back 2011, what I call China 3.0. Zero. And this is, this is at the time when the ADBC, Advancing Digitization of Biological Collections, it was an NSF initiative to digitize as many US collections as possible. And there would be two to four grants every year that focused on digitizing collections, but both botanical, zoological. And, um, and at one point of the, there's Back when there was 20, a number of them used Symbiota as their management platform to, to kind of gather the data together. And um, this allowed us to, a lot of sub-awards to developing the digitization tools that are in there. So that's one thing. But the, the other thing is that we really increased the numbers of their collections there. So we went from before this date of maybe having less than 2 billion specimens in there, to now there's 15.2 million specimens and there's 9.4 million images. And so it's really increased the data set that's associated with Sinus. So, um, so that, was, that was a benefit. This award type thing, there's been, there was four TCNs that were specifically associated with Sinus. And so now we went from, when these awards came in, we went to a new model. We went from being a single installation of the software and a single database to being able to install multiple instances of the front end and creating different regional portals that were all connected to a single data source. And that's what came about what we call the SciNet Regional Portal Network. So now, here, is the little pointer work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right there, that's Cernec, that's the southeast herbaria. That's the midwest herbaria. This is dedicated to small collections um, and intermount region. And uh, there's right now 11 di distributed networks that are across the US, and they all connect to the same database. So if someone in in the southeast, that there's in an Arizona specimen, it's automatically available within the, the southwest system. So, so it becomes a, a shared data source. And these three, these four um, portals here were all aligned with TCN networks to do digitization within SciNet. And then this was aligned also with IDIG Bio. Um, so it became a real collaborative type network. And we got rid of the, um, the Southwest in, um, Environmental Information Network. Now it's just an acronym. You could say it's also, you could pronounce it SANET if you want, you know, SANET. <laughs> so, and uh, so the ADBC work uh, that allowed us to create a whole bunch of new to tools within Symbiota, which immediately became available within SciNet. So what's the future now? Um, I think Bio has a couple more years of, of doing digitization. Um, they've been hosting the server. So back when, back at uh, 3.0 version, SciNet went from ASU, where, where it started, over to I think Bio. And that's where it's been hosted for, for numerous years now. Now, um, uh, the ADBC is, is um, winding down. Uh, uh, Signet's coming back to ASU, and um, and we have a center of biodiversity knowledge integration or biokit center, um, and that is what's going to be supporting the infrastructure for serving the data. Um, what we really want to work on is bio collaborations and um, outreach and so forth. Uh, we also want to work on modifying the software. So one of the bad things is we have this one database, but it doesn't talk to Lichen Portal. It doesn't talk to the other portals. It doesn't talk to IDIG Bio directly or GBIT. And we want to create some infrastructure where the data can flow back and forth. And then long-term sustainability is the other thing. You know, up until now, these awards from the different TCNs, the different ADBC awards, they've been a windfall to one of the portals, but the other portals that have not had the support have been 
been surviving because of that. And then another TCM would come in. So it's been a network of these 11 portals all sharing, being fed by each other. So, And um, so now we're working, this is the steering committee there, um, we're working on putting together a sustainability, long-term sustainability model. And we're trying to figure out whether it's sponsors, donations, eBay's, et cetera. And, um, and there's a whole bunch of people that have been involved in this project over the last 20 years. Disappointed that Symbiota has not been more successful <coughs> over the years? I don't know, it's been a little too successful for me. And then it's back to keeping me busy. No. I'll just comment that I, I think Ed has got great diplomatic skills, and that's part of the reason it's gotten so good. Yeah. I mean, nobody saw it, but that's what excites us as far as. If anyone can solve it, I think you guys can. 